Hey folks, today we have a complete beginner's guide, user interface guide, tutorial, whatever you want to call it for the new Garmin Venue Square 2 GPS watch. It's the one in the middle right there. On the left hand side, I've got the older Venue Square 1. On the right hand side, the Venue 2 Plus. In the middle, the Venue Square 2, 2 Square, again, Square 2, whatever you want to call this thing, that's the middle watch there. And that's the one that we're mostly going to be focusing on. Now in this video, I'm going to walk through step by step each one of the components of the watch. It's going to be a long video, about a half an hour or so. I'm going to talk about the user interface, all the health and fitness features, then we'll go into the sports features, we'll talk about things like music and contactless payments. We're just going to go through pretty much everything and we give you tons of tips and tricks along the way. With that, let's just simply get started. The watch itself has two buttons that you see on the side right there. Uh, and of course, it's got a touch screen on top. Now this watch has both an always on display as well as a gesture based display. You'll notice it keeps on turning off. That's because it has an AMOLED display and AMOLED displays are really brilliant and really bright, similar to what you'd see on an Apple watch or a Samsung watch. Uh, but the problem with those displays is they burn a lot of battery. So manufacturers will turn off the display at every opportunity they get. There is a mode called always on mode. And if I were to put this on my wrist, it'll go ahead and actually stay on in always on mode because that's what I have it set for right now. In that mode, you only get about three days of battery life uh, versus in the regular mode, you get upwards of 14 days of battery life. And you can see now that it's on my wrist that it's not quite full brightness for the watch face. Watch as I tilt my wrist though, it goes to full brightness, it fills in the rest of the pixels there because again, it's saving battery. And now when I put it on the desk here, it detects it's not on a human. And at that point, it turns off the display entirely. So you can see it turning off the display a lot, but it makes it so you can see all the things I'm showing you. Otherwise, if I try to do this on my wrist for the entire video, it'll end up being clunky for you. So we're just gonna stick it on the table. Now, just a quick note, this is not my full in-depth review. That's linked up in the corner there where I talk about accuracy and all the new features in a much more condensed manner. This is all about just walking through this entire watch and how it works. So now putting it back on the table right here, this is the watch face. You can customize this watch face and the software has just been updated in the background. Uh, so the software updates usually during the day at a quiet time period. It's been kind of quiet the last few minutes here. Uh, in this case, it's telling me the touchscreen was updated. So I appreciate that. Sensor software was updated and we're back to normal. In the past, Garmin would update the watch in the middle of the night while you slept. The problem with that is sometimes you get what called notification bombs where when it restarts, your phone sends all the notifications to it and you don't get woken up at two in the morning. Versus now it will find a quiet time during daytime when you're not doing very much. It uses you know, the accelerometers to detect what you're doing. It says, hey, this is a chill moment and it's gonna update that software. Now back on this watch face, you can tweak these watch faces by holding the right hand button right there. There we go. And just tap on watch face. There's a couple of different ones, stock ones, if you will, to choose from here. Uh, but you can also go to the Garmin Connect mobile app and download plenty of other watch faces, either ones that are pre-built by other people, or you can make your own with photos. I'm showing you some of the pictures of that right now on the screen there. And then those watch faces would show up on the watch. Now, if you swipe on down right here, you'll see these are what called widget glances. Uh, this means that they're basically a smaller version of the widgets that we'll dive into in just a second. And each one of these glances can then be clicked on or tapped on to get more information about it. Uh, so if I go right here and then click on steps, I can see right there, this is my steps since midnight. Not very many steps. I can then swipe like this across this timeline uh, to see those steps since midnight. There we go. I can also go down like this and you can see the steps over the last seven or so days. Swipe up again. This is the steps over the last uh, week again in terms of kilometers or distance. It'll be miles if you have it set to uh, statute, so miles, pace, etc. cetera. Uh, and then if I go back here, I can do the same for pretty much all of these. So again, calories, I can swipe up, see active calories, uh, total calories, et cetera. And now every single one of these widget glances you can customize uh, down at the bottom. So you can say, I wanna see this or I don't wanna see this and I'll remove it from this widget glance roll. So if I scroll down to the very bottom right there, whoop, went way too far past the bottom, you'll see edit, I can tap this. And then these are all the widget glances. So I can change this, I can change the ordering, for example, and click plus and I can add more widget glances. So I can show my last ride, my last swim, my last golf. I can add lights if I have, this is for cycling lights. Uh, so not like light bulb lights, but like cycling lights that are using AMP plus. Control that there, add challenges, and I can remove these as well if I don't want certain ones in there. So clicking on back here, as I mentioned, there are two buttons. This is like your confirmation yes button, and this is your back and escape button. Uh, so on the back here is that optical heart rate sensor as well as the charging port. This is the standard Garmin charging port used on almost all of their devices. It's been the same for many, many years. 
And this is Garmin's new Elevate V4 or Gen 4 optical heart rate sensor. New being all relative, it's about a year, maybe a year and a quarter old or so, uh, but it's used on almost all their watches these days. You'll notice the bands here. These are 20 millimeter quick release bands. So I can just pop this off like this with a fingernail and I can put other Garmin straps on there or other bands that I find online. And hey, just a quick note, if you're finding this useful or interesting, that was a great time to whack that like button at the bottom there. It really does help out this video and this channel quite a bit and I do definitely appreciate it. Now, flipping it back over here in the upper right hand side, if I hold this down, I access what's called the controls menu. Uh, so this is the customizable controls menu that basically lets me quick access to certain things. You can see Spotify music there, my contact us payments, I've got find my phone, my phone connections, do not disturb, I can lock the screen, I could change the brightness if I wanted to, so down to one third brightness uh, there, or I can go to full brightness. The default for this is uh, basically two thirds brightness. So you can see if I do that, it'll impact the battery life. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Go back to the default that we have right there uh, and then escape out of there. If I want to access the settings menu, I long hold this right hand button down there and this access settings. So I got watch face, clock, uh, history, and then the very bottom is settings. And these are where all the different settings are. Things like third party accessories, sensors, your heart rate, uh, wrist heart rate there. I can turn on broadcasting. We'll talk about this a little bit more later on. Uh, scroll on down here, connectivity, user profile, safety and tracking for things like incident detection and assistance. Incident detection means if you're running along and you trip and fall on faceplant, it'll actually use your phone. Uh, so this phone here to go ahead and notify your friends and family that you set up in the contact list. Uh, and the same is true for assistance there as well. So now the idea behind the safety assistance is if you're feeling like unsafe somewhere, you can just long hold this upper right hand button there keep on holding it, keep on going. Uh, and eventually it'll trigger the safety assistance alert. There we go. Uh, at this point, I've got 10 seconds to cancel it. Uh, and at the end of that, it'll go ahead and notify my contacts, my friends and family. Uh, so I'm just gonna cancel that real quick right there, uh, that I'm in trouble. And with that, we'll actually send them a link uh, with the GPS tracking. At that point, it'll continue to track me until I close out or end this particular session. Again, that does require a phone be paired within range of this device, because there is no cellular in uh, the Venue Square series. Uh, so just Keep that in mind. And that exact same process of sending a link and whatnot also occurs if you crash, whether it's running or bicycle, etc. Uh, it's all in that same package. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, there is the ability to change the settings for that display mode. So if we go down to settings right there, go down again, all the way to the bottom, there we go to system, uh, and you'll see display. Uh, and it's basically divided up into two categories, during activity and not during activity. In this case, activity means during sports. So you may want it so that you're saving battery life the rest of the day. So you go back into here, say not during activity, and then just go to either medium or short uh, for the timeout with the screen. So it'll go back and basically turn off the screen entirely when you're not looking at it. Uh, but during a workout, you may say, you know what, I always want it to be always on during the workout, which would be my preference as well go up to during activity and set that to be always on right there. If you're having problems where it's not going ahead and recognizing that gesture uh, as you raise your wrist, you can tweak the sensitivity. Uh, the default is high, so it's probably already there, but uh, that's something you can tweak if you want to, uh, to lower high. Now going out back here, you can change the display brightness just like we did earlier. Uh, so that's always an option if you find it too bright or uh, too dark. And then we'll continue on back out of here. Uh, now, before we go too far, I do want to mention the battery manager feature. Uh, so this is something that is new to the Venue 2 Square. Uh, it's been on other Grummer devices for quite a while. And this is handy if you find yourself in a pickle, like say you're on a trip somewhere and you forgot your charging cable uh, and you need just to eke out a little bit more battery, you can enable this option here. Uh, and this will eke out quite a bit. So when you enable this and toggle this option right there, uh, you can see it actually turns the, the display brightness down quite a bit, but it makes a ton of other changes. You see watch face goes to low power, display timeout to short, Wi-Fi disabled, brightness to low, music disabled, auto activity is, uh, is disabled, pulse locks disabled, gesture modes off. So it's doing all the things it can to turn off and save a lot of battery life. And with that, you get quite a bit more both GPS battery life as well as uh, daily tracking or smartwatch battery life. And you can see that estimate right there. Now, since we're in this area, another thing you want to add at some point is uh, the ability to connect to Wi-Fi. So you see under connectivity right there, you got your phone, which you probably already paired up at this point, uh, but Wi-Fi you may not have added. Uh, so you want to add Wi-Fi because it does a couple things. One, it goes ahead and it syncs out data to your Wi-Fi network uh, when you come within range of it. So that's handy if your phone is dead, you don't have it with you, whatever the case may be. Uh, but it also allows you to download music. And that's really actually the most important piece there uh, is that if you have the music version, and there are two different versions. So 249 bucks, 
bucks, there's the bass version. And then at 299 bucks, there's the music version. That's the only difference between those two editions is purely the music. All the features beyond that are identical. There, of course, is more storage in the music version than the non-music version. Uh, but you don't have to worry about storage in any other context except for music on this particular watch anyways. Uh, so do go ahead and add that Wi-Fi network there for the music side of it. Uh, that way you have that benefits when you want to sync that music. Because music does not sync via Bluetooth, it syncs via Wi-Fi. So going on back here into uh, some of these widgets in a bit more depth. So we talked about steps. Intensity minutes is essentially when your heart rate is raised up. So in other words, uh, you're walking briskly or you're running or you're doing a full workout. Uh, it shouldn't be just sitting here like this because that's really not all that intense. Uh, so if I tap that, I can see my intensity minutes since midnight, basically flatline. I've been sitting here at the desk all day long, uh, editing and whatnot, so nothing there. If I go up, you can see my goal for the week. I'm well above my goal for the week based on all the workouts that I've had thus far, so that's cool. Uh, and you can see I've already met my particular goal for the week. You can adjust these goals, by the way, in the settings on the Garmin Connect mobile app. It's pretty much the easiest way to do that, uh, as well as the watch here, too. Going on back, you can see calories. I think calories is pretty straightforward for most people. Uh, you can see my resting calories today, my active calories, not very much, uh, and then the total calories burned. Uh, if I was doing a workout, I would see more in the active side, uh, and that would, of course, add to my total that you see down below there. Trying to basically break out the calories that you burn from just being alive, which is essentially your resting calories, uh, versus the calories based on extra work or extra things that you've done that day. Going back again here, uh, hydration. This allows you to track how much uh, liquid, ideally water, that you've drank. Uh, and this, you can simply add cups in there. Uh, it's not tracking it automatically. So you do have to go and tap these little buttons uh, after you've had a cup of, of liquid. Now, heart rate. Heart rate's going to use the optical heart rate sensor on the back here. And while this is an optical heart rate sensor, it's really tracking quite a few other things. Uh, so it's going to get breathing rate, for example. Uh, and then I'll just show you in a second, I'll also do pulse ox or blood oxygenation levels. Uh, and then from there, they can do all sorts of other things uh, based on this heart rate sensor. And if I press my finger over the top of it, Give it just a second. There you go. You can see that green light turns on. It powers the full brightness because now it can't quite detect my finger anymore. So it adds more power to it to get that. It does the same thing in a workout, by the way, as well. Uh, so in like normal day mode, it has a lower power mode. Uh, it's still recording every second. But once you jump into a workout, it actually increases power to that sensor to get more accurate data because the watch is bouncing around and things like that. So going on back here, uh, if we go into the heart rate option, you can see this is since midnight. The watch has been off a lot today. So if I go back earlier in the overnight, you can see right there, it's pretty low, of course, while I'm sleeping. Uh, if I swipe up there, uh, you can see my seven day resting heart rate average. I find resting heart rate is super valuable to track fatigue, for example, uh, also to track whether or not you might be getting sick. Uh, it's a good indicator. More recently, a lot of folks were using breathing rate as well as more rare wearables have that. That is offered here as well. And in fact, I can go back there and see that down below. There is respiration rate, breathing rate. Uh, you can see my breaths per minute. And then down here, this is my seven day average. On this particular day, on that Saturday, I was switching watches and one watch just took over the value. So just ignore that particular thing there. Uh, but if we go back here, you'll see there's body battery and stress. Body battery is essentially what it implies. It's your battery, how it thinks your battery over the course of the day. Uh, in this case, I start off my day uh, at 76 out of 100, uh, and then it's been draining slowly over the course of the day. Uh, if I were to lie down for a nap, you'd actually see body battery increase. This is really on a per day basis. It's not designed to be like for longer term trending. It's just, what have you done for me uh, since waking up? And then how much sleep did you get last night to get closer to 100%? And then if I go down here, I can see that exact same thing with stress. Uh, so in this case, you know, low stress right there. I wasn't wearing it during this time period, so I was filming and whatnot with it. You can see low stress overnight when I was sleeping, uh, and then, you know, low, but there's some stress right there, uh, activity as I'm dropping off the kids at school and things like that. Going on back here, that stress is showing the exact same thing we just saw in body battery, uh, pulse ox. So pulse ox is measuring your blood oxygenation level. Uh, it's gonna use a red light sensor on the back of it. In order to trick this, I'm gonna put my finger there. Uh, and I'm gonna say try again, and you have to wait. I'm gonna flip it over really quick, and you'll see the red sensor. There you go, just like that. Uh, but it quickly goes back to green and shuts off. Uh, most wearable companies, Garmin included, have gotten a lot better about ensuring that there's stillness uh, when you're measuring this particular metric uh, because it's very, very sensitive to movement. Uh, and so if you have a lot of movement, this measurement will be incorrect. Uh, and generally speaking, you're looking for this measurement to be like 94 and higher, really like 98, 99. Uh, but if you see it in the 80s, that means there's either something wrong with the measurement, most likely, 
be the case, uh, or something wrong with you. Uh, if you see it like in the 70s and something is really wrong, probably more with you than the device. Uh, generally speaking, like you see that 88% right there, that's from 10 hours ago when I was sleeping. Uh, that I would say is an incorrect data point. It's as simple as that. Uh, I'm at sea level here. I don't have any other health issues. Uh, so that's just inaccurate data. Perhaps the watch was a little bit loose. I don't tend to have pulse ox enabled 24 by seven. I only enabled it last night during sleeping just for this review, uh, but I find a huge battery burner isn't super accurate in a lot of cases, uh, unless I'm just controlling it myself, like a manual check of that, because then I'm controlling how the movement and all that stuff is. But doing it at night isn't usually worth the battery. Um, it'll blow through your entire battery in just a couple days. So be super cautious in enabling that. Anyways, swiping on down past that there, we've got the sleep tracking. Uh, so this is my sleep last night, not super long sleep, uh, four hours, 58 minutes. My sleep score, my sleep quality is fair. Uh, so while it was short, it was good continuous sleep, which is true. I fell asleep and stayed pretty hard uh, sleep until I woke up. Uh, you can see those are the times that I went to sleep and woke up. Both of those are actually spot on accurate. So good job there. These are the sleep phases, deep, light, REM, awake. Uh, I don't put a lot of stock in sleep phases for most wearables uh, because the accuracy just isn't there. And even on the highest end, best consumer wearables out there, uh, it's not great. And even if you compare it to uh, most, you know, like, studies that are done around sleep tracking, the accuracy of those devices in most cases, uh, the way those are read, uh, is only about 80%. So you're comparing like one thing that's inaccurate to another thing that's already inaccurate, it's just not worth it. I think, you know, there might be some value in long-term trending, but not sitting there trying to figure out if these are exactly what you want for every single night. It's just not worth it and the, the accuracy is simply not there. So going on back here, I can see my activities over the last seven days. I can see any uh, particular calendar appointments I have set up right there. Uh, I've got my notifications. I can dive into this. I can see notifications from smartphone apps. So I've got here uh, my Whoop app. I've got um, Amazon, Strava, etc. Anything that's set up in your phone will show up here. It basically mirrors however you have it set up on your phone. Going on down here, I've got weather. I can see the weather nearby, the weather right now. Uh, so in this case, it's gonna show me the weather for the rest of the day. I can swipe down again, see the weather for the next few days. This is all in Celsius, by the way, so I uh, just have it set there. I can see the dew point humidity and UV index. Uh, and again, these are all just widgets that you can customize and you can download third-party widgets as well. Rounding out to the bottom here, I've got uh, Spotify or music control. We'll talk more about music later on. And then we have the health snapshot. Uh, so the health snapshot, allows me to see these stats. It basically does a test over the course of two minutes and it's the best test ever because you just sit there still for two minutes. That's all you do. And at the end of it, it'll go ahead and give you these five metrics. So your average heart rate, basically looking for resting heart rate, uh, your SPO2 value, uh, your respiration rate, your breathing rate, your stress, that was super low then, that time of night, two, uh, and then the HRV value, 63. This is actually the only place on the watch you'll be able to see those HRV values. Uh, on Garmin's higher end watches, like the 255, the 455, the 955, the 455, that is, sorry, uh, and the Phoenix series, those actually will track the HRV value at night. Uh, but here, it's only this one-off sort of thing. I, I suspect over time, we might see that change, like maybe a next version of a venue. Uh, but for now, it's just right there. At the end of this though, you can send this particular report to your doctor if you want to. Uh, so you could do this every single day at the same time. That'd be the best way to do that. Uh, and then be able to send that report to your doctor and they can figure out if that data makes sense for you. Okay, now I know I just blew through a ton of different like general uh, fitness data, health data. Keep in mind though that everything that's on this watch is also synced to the Garmin Connect app. Uh, that's part of the Garmin Connect platform, an online platform. And with that, you have the mobile app. And from there, you can see all this data and trend it over whatever time frames you want. Uh, so you can say, hey, I wanna see just this particular day, just this hour, just this minute's worth of data, or go all the way up and say, I wanna see my entire year's worth of data. See how my steps have changed for, you know, from winter to spring to summer and so on. There are absolutely tons of ways you can look at that data and arguably way too much data in there for most people. In fact, that's one of the biggest complaints about Garmin devices is that it's just like data overload. Garmin has done a better job though in recent years at kind of surfacing some of that information up to the homepage. Uh, you can see the homepage right here or there or somewhere like that. Uh, so you can see kind of a consolidated view of just today as well as the last seven days. Uh, but if you want to dig into that data, it's certainly there as well. And I think, you know, a lot of people, myself included, find value and be able to go dig down deeper and deeper. And I think sometimes you'd be able to go from that high level view and say, you know what, I want to understand what is going on on these particular months, these weeks. That's when you have the power to go down and dig deeper if you want to. Now, switching away 
away from general health stuff into the sports side of things. Uh, to access your sports, you're gonna tap this upper right hand button right there, and you can see these are the sport modes. And in particular, these are the favorite sport modes. Uh, so right now, these top ones right there, run, bike, bike indoor, pool, strength, etc., cetera, uh, hit, uh, those are ones I've set as favorites. When you first set up the watch, it'll ask you which sports you want as favorites, uh, and the rest of them, fall into this category. So I've added yoga, there's a Connect IQ app store, uh, navigate, breathwork, health snapshot, and then everything else is down here. These are all the rest of sport modes. So walk, walk indoor, treadmill, indoor track, cardio, Pilates, elliptical, let you just kind of scroll through these right here. Uh, and these are all the sport modes on the watch itself. And then I can also go down the very bottom and I can copy an activity if I want and kind of tweak that as a secondary copy of that particular sport mode. Now, each one of these sport modes allows you to customize the features. And the idea behind the sport modes is that there are different data metrics for different sports. So for example, in running, you have pace uh, versus in cycling, you have speed and stand up paddle boarding, you have you know, stroke rate and things like that. Uh, but if I tap on run, for example, there we go. And I swipe up from the bottom. I can change the settings for this particular sport profile. So I can change my data screens. I've got three different screens I can customize, plus a heart rate zone gauge at the bottom. I can tap one of these screens. I can change the layout uh, from four data fields to three, to two, or to one data field. Uh, if I go back to the four data fields right there, I can then change what's in those data fields by choosing edit data fields. And I can do this as well on the Garmin Connect mobile app. And I can change this, for example, the heart rate uh, data field at the bottom and say, I want it to be uh, heart rate, yes, but a different type of heart rate. Maybe my heart rate zone instead of just my heart rate uh, beats per minute. And you can do this for all the sport profiles. Uh, so I'm just gonna go back here. And then within that, there's also other options. Options. So I can create alerts. For example, I want to create alert for heart rate or run walk or pace or time or distance, cadence, calories. And again, this is on most of the sport profiles out there. And I can go back here and I can say, you know what, I want auto lap on every one kilometer to give me a lap. Uh, I can also manually take a lap by just simply holding down the right hand button midway through. If I go down again, auto pause, that'll automatically pause the workout at like a stoplight or something like that. Uh, I don't tend to use this. I just keep the workout running the entire time. You do you, but my preference is just error on the side of like it's always on uh, and not worry about it too much later on. Uh, then you have the GPS option. Now within the venue square two, there is this new all system GPS uh, and there's also GPS only. Uh, so GPS only saves battery life up to 26 hours of GPS time versus all systems is only 20 hours. And of course, that's plenty of hours of GPS for most people, uh, but all systems has up to five different what's called GNSS systems, or basically GPS systems that it can tap into to get better accuracy and better performance. Keep in mind though, that is different than what's called dual frequency or multi-band GPS on some of Garmin's higher end watches. Uh, for the most part, in most scenarios, you won't see much of a difference between the all systems on this and some of their higher end multi-band uh, watches. However, one area where you might see that difference is like deep city environments. I did a run last night in the city uh, and you can see pretty clearly the difference between a 400 255, which isn't, it's only like 50 bucks more than this watch uh, that has a multi-band enabled versus this watch where it's not enabled. In that case, uh, the 255 with the multi-band really nailed that particular tracking uh, in between those really tall buildings in the downtown district versus this one kind of struggled at a few different points there. Uh, now going back here in the sport options, you can also do structured workouts. So you see at the top there, there's workouts. There's a couple pre-canned ones right here built into the watch, mitts intervals, uh, quarter mile repeats, et cetera. But you can also add your own. Uh, so you can create your own like I did at the very bottom for this track workout. So I've got some eight in there, some 400s in there and so on. Nothing crazy. Uh, and you can create this on Garmin Connect Mobile using a smartphone app. Uh, or you can download training plans or just one-off workouts from Garmin Connect Mobile. So you can download like a 5K, you know, couch to 5K kind of plan, a half marathon plan, a cycling plan. All those things are available to download to the watch. And the same is true for other workout types as well. Uh, so there are strength workouts in there, yoga. So if I go back right here and go down to, uh, let's see, strength, there we go. Swipe up, workouts. You can see total body muscle. Uh, now these are the total body muscle workout options there. But I wanna show you a key difference between this and the Venue uh, 2, uh, you know, non-square series, if you will. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Tap this, go to strength, swipe up, workouts, total body muscle. Uh, and you see the same sets we saw on this side just a second ago before I touched into it. Uh, but I can tap on these there. Come on, there we go, went to sleep. I can tap on these right there and you'll see the muscle map of what the particular muscle groups that it's working. 
I can also tap on this right hand side and for every single one of these exercises, uh, it'll show me a little animation. That is not available on the venue square. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the actual workouts are there, but this little animation isn't there. And that's true for things like yoga and other areas where you might not know what it's asking you to do. Like if I was to go into uh, yoga on you know, this watch right here, and this is the same, same exact workouts as this one, go into this and just choose you know, yoga for runners. Uh, I might not know what every single one of these particular things are. Uh, so to be able to look and say, okay, what is cow pose? Well, there you go, that's cow pose. Um, or what is cat pose? What's the difference? And it shows you those movements back and forth versus the venue square will unfortunately not do that. Okay, so taking this out of the way, back over here, we will not be doing that workout right now. Uh, but going on back here, I'm gonna go back to the run one just because it's a little bit easier to show you all these things. Uh, within that, there's a training calendar. So if you had chosen one of those training plans, it'll give you your calendar right here of all your upcoming workouts. So that way you don't really do anything. It basically just shows up automatically on your watch and then you just go off and do that particular workout. Uh, if I swipe down here at this point, I could start my workout. Now you see it's waiting for GPS, of course, because it's an outdoor workout. If I want to do an indoor workout, I would have chosen an indoor workout one where it's not going to use GPS. It's also blinking that little heart rate icon, meaning it's trying to find lock of the heart rate on the back. Uh, if I had a sensor, an accessory sensor, for example, heart rate strap, I could pair that by just holding this right hand button down there. And that gets me back to my settings. Let me get out of this first. Hold right hand button there, down to settings, and then down to sensors. Uh, and then I can add a new sensor type. So headphones is considered a sensor. We'll talk about that in just a second. A uh, heart rate sensors, external, AMP plus or Bluetooth smart. The same is true for speed and cadence for cycling, running foot pod, Tempe is a temperature sensor. Uh, lights are cycling light sensors from Garmin and other companies. Uh, radar are cycling radar sensors from Garmin and other companies. They basically tell you when cars are overtaking you. Really, really super useful, uh, like in country roads and things like that. Uh, so those are all supported on this watch. And again, almost all these are dual AMP plus as well as Bluetooth sensors. Uh, so the point there being that back on this menu right here, if I had a heart rate strap that I was wearing, uh, it would show that it was locked onto that with the heart rate icon. Uh, or if it was on my wrist, it would show that's got heart rate lock on the wrist. Uh, always validate that you have lock for both heart rate as well as satellite before you start your workout. It is way harder for the watch to try to lock that once you started than just standing there. In most cases, your GPS lock here should take like one to three seconds. So you're not talking very long and it'll usually already have heart rate lock from earlier on. So once you start your workout, you press this upper right hand button, you can see the timer there, distance, pace, heart rate zone. But again, these are the customized pages that I've created for this particular profile. I can swipe up, here's another one of my custom pages. This is my lap page, so my current heart rate, because I like to see my instant heart rate. I don't really care about like lap averages for heart rate, uh, but I wanna see my lap distance, my lap time, my lap pace. I can swipe up again and I can see my current heart rate and the heart rate zones around the outer edge there. Uh, those zones you can define on the watch or on Garmin Connect and they'll sync here. If I wanted to go ahead and create a lap, I just tap this right hand button, you can see right there, create the lap. Or if I had auto lap going on, it would do that every one kilometer as I showed you a bit earlier. Once I'm done with the workout, I can go ahead and press this upper right hand button. This will pause it. Uh, so right now I could you know, go into an ice cream shop eat an ice cream, come back out again and continue on running. Uh, or I can save the workout by pressing this lower hand button right there. To resume the workout, I just press this button right there. That'll shut the workout and keep it going again. Uh, but I'm gonna stop it. And then at the bottom, I would choose this option to save the workout. Now I'm gonna discard this one because it's just a junk, you know, 47 seconds. But you can see here on the screen uh, what it looks like when I save a normal workout. Uh, you can see a little tiny map of it. Uh, and you also see basically heart rate chart of the workout. You can swipe down and get kind of your top line, top like six or seven, uh, stats for that particular workout. And then down below, you can swipe up again uh, and go into the lap view of that workout as well as the heart rate zones for that workout. Uh, and then all of this data again is synced up to the Garmin Connect Mobile app. And so from there, you can go into way more details. And a really good example of that is that this watch does not have a barometric altimeter. Uh, so unlike the Venue 2 uh, Plus or you know Venue 2 uh, itself that does have an altimeter in it, uh, this one cannot track stairs. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And because it can't track stairs, it doesn't have that altimeter. It also can't track ascent and descent on the watch itself. So there is no hike profile in this or hiking profile in this. Uh, so you're not going to see elevation while in a uh, workout. But the good news is you can still see all that data after the fact in the Garmin Tech mobile app. It uses your GPS track to figure out where you are on earth. 
Earth, and from there it can determine your elevation data. Uh, so you're gonna get all the same data after the fact, just not during the workout itself. And of course, once you're done with the workout, it'll sync all that data, not just to Garmin Connect as I showed you, but also off to any third-party apps or platforms. So things like Strava or Training Peaks, anything else that you've got connected to your Garmin account, it'll do that as well. Now, the last thing before we talk about some of the music and stuff is that you can broadcast your heart rate to other apps. So if you have, for example, a Peloton bike or any app like Zwift or Strava, et cetera, where you wanna pull in the heart rate data from your watch to that app or device, you can do that. So the way you do it is you pull the right hand button right there and you go down into settings and then you'll see wrist heart rate. Uh, and there's two different options here. Uh, the first one is broadcast and activity. So if you toggle this on, by default it's off, when you open up a workout on the watch, it'll automatically start broadcasting both AMP Plus as well as Bluetooth Smart, and you can easily find that, uh, for example, on a Peloton bike, you'll see it on the screen right there as a heart rate sensor, just like a heart rate strap, or, if you don't want to record the activity on the watch itself, you don't want like duplicates or whatever the case may be, you have the broadcast option right there. Press the play, and then once the play button is pressed, it'll start broadcasting your heart rate, it'll show your heart rate on this. So right now, of course, it's on the table, so it's not gonna show it, but put my finger below it for a second, it'll show the heart rate, and then once you've got it connected to a device, it'll actually tell you the name of the device at the bottom. They'll say like Peloton bike, or it'll say your phone name, or whatever the case may be, uh, and then once you're done with this, you can just press the stop there to stop broadcasting. There is a slight hit to battery to broadcast your heart rate, though it's actually not that much. It's pretty minimal in the grand scheme of things, especially if you're already doing a workout or already in a workout mode. Now, with all the workout stuff covered, let's talk about music. Uh, so I'm gonna go on back here to uh, the main page, and then I've got my headphones. These are standard issue, Bluetooth headphones, nothing fancy right there. Uh, still missing one of my little buds from losing on the trail a couple weeks ago, uh, but I've been using it, works out just fine. Within this, you can add headphones as a Bluetooth device. So bottom right-hand side first, go down into sensors and accessories, and then you'll see I have my power beats are right there. Uh, so if I were to tap these and click connect, uh, it'll probably connect up to these. You can tap to add multiple sensor types, not just of headphones, but of all sorts of things. So if you have multiple bikes, for example, you can do that. Uh, so let's see to get these woken up. Come on, wake up there. There we go, connected. And now they are connected here. So I'm gonna go back to the main menu and I'm gonna go down to my music option. Uh, now the first time you set up music, uh, it'll basically ask you to connect to an account. And this supports music that you just put on it, like MP3 files and things like that. But more interestingly for most people is it connects to music services. So Spotify, Deezer, and Amazon Music. Uh, and that's assuming you have a premium account in those. Uh, so when I do that, I can then download my music from those platforms onto the watch. So I do not need my phone with me once I start my workout. So I can go ahead and, you know, I basically need to authorize it once on this, but once it's authorized, you're good to go. And then you can go ahead and download music onto the watch and listen to it just using the headphones out in the run without any sort of uh, phone with you at all. You can change your playlist, the bottom right there. So you can see this is a playlist I've downloaded 75 tracks. I can add more uh, music from my Spotify account because I've got Spotify paired up to it. So it's gonna essentially enumerate all the playlists onto this. Uh, here's my playlist in my account, just in the same order that are in my Spotify account. It'll then eventually show up each one of these particular uh, little album titles right there. And I can tap on it and add it. Ideally, when you're downloading music, probably just stick it on a charger nearby because it does burn through the battery quite a bit. And also, it really helps if you're close to your Wi-Fi access point. So even here in the studio, it's super helpful to take this and just put it like in the same room as that access point. It makes a really big difference. Now, once I'm ready to play, I just simply tap on that playlist and you can see it's gonna play that song right there. Uh, let's see if I can hear it, put it next to the microphone. Don't wanna get a copyright strike, but you can hear something going on there. And I can skip tracks by tapping it there. If your headphones or whatever audio device you have supports buttons to skip and things like that, you can do that from the headphones. It'll control it here, no problem. I can tap on the bottom there. I can change the volume. Uh, so just go down, there we go, like this, or up, uh, like that. Going on back here, I can change, you know, to the track, so I can do uh, shuffle there, over here, uh, repeat that same track over and over again, uh, and so on. Pretty much standard issue music controls, and this ultimately works pretty well for me. I haven't really had any problems with it. Uh, you have basically three-ish or so usable gigs of storage on this, uh, so you're gonna get, I don't know how many hundreds of tracks on there, plenty of hundreds of tracks, I'll put it on the screen right now, uh, on this. And the cool part is it'll automatically update every time you plug in this uh, watch into a power outlet. So if you have a, let me just pause this real quick. 
If you have a playlist that's you know changing every single week, like that week's top hit playlist, uh, anytime you plug this in and it's got enough power on there, uh, it'll connect to Wi-Fi and it'll download the latest tracks for that playlist automatically. You do have to have the watch check in every 30 days uh, to Spotify, to Amazon Music, etc., to validate that you still have a subscription. But other than that, it'll just be on there ready to go for your runs. So the last area to talk on or touch on here is the contactless payments. Okay, got my uh, phone and contactless payment reader all set, ready to show you this. Uh, so essentially, contactless payments allows you to go ahead and load your credit cards from supported banks into the watch so you can pay for things wherever you want. Just tap to pay. Pretty straightforward. I think everyone knows what this is at this point in time. Uh, the trick though, or the catch is that it has to be one of Garmin Pay supported banks. Now in the US, if you've got a major US credit card, no problem, it's supported. In many other countries as well, Garmin keeps adding to that list, are supported. It is though a bank by bank basis, meaning that it's not just all Visa cards or all MasterCards, et cetera. It's your particular bank. Uh, so I live in the Netherlands and uh, virtually every bank is supported except my bank, which is unfortunate. So I can't use my Dutch card on this, uh, but all the other banks are supported. Uh, instead, I use my US-based credit card because that is supported. It's from Chase. And so uh, they support that there. Uh, but some of my smaller banks that I have in the US and my bank accounts there, uh, kind of old ones, for example, before I moved here, uh, are not supported because they're not partnered with Garmin. Point being, if you just search for the word Garmin Pay on Google, uh, you'll find the list of banks. It's a current list, sorted by country, and figure out whether this feature will even work for you at all. Uh, so with that said, the way it works is upper right hand button, hold this button down there, uh, and you can see that's your wallet option. Uh, so I can tap this, I then enter a passcode in. As long as I'm wearing the watch, you only have to enter it in once per day. Uh, since the watch is not on there, I can't do that. I'm gonna enter my super secret passcode. There we go. And now I can say hole in your reader. Uh, so in this case, I can grab my merch, I got my water bottle, I've got my hat, I've got my coffee cup, check that out. Uh, these things are linked down below right there if you actually wanna buy them. Uh, now because there is a like special pricing here in the DCR cave, I'm just gonna charge myself one dollar for them. Uh, so you can see that right there, uh, one dollar. Uh, and then I could charge uh, cash reader, there we go. And now over here, it shows one dollar right there. And I bring this close and the second I do that, it's gonna go boop and it's charged the one dollar and I'm done. It's as simple as that. Like again, all you have to do is just hold that down for a second. Uh, if it's already got the passcode saved for the last 24 hours, you just tap the reader and you're done. The entire transaction, just like any other tap to pay, takes literally just one second. Anyways, there you go. That is a complete look at the Garmin uh, Venue Square 2, Venue 2 Square. I, I, one of these days I'll get it right. Uh, watch a complete beginner's guide. If you got any questions, feel free to drop them down below there, or if you found this useful, definitely let me know in the comments. Uh, and again, if you did find this video useful, if you could hit that like button at the bottom, it really does help out this video and the channel quite a bit. Uh, and if you're not subscribed, there is plenty more sports technology stuff coming up very shortly here. Uh, September in particular is gonna be absolutely bonkers around this part, so uh, you don't wanna miss out. With that, have a good one.